Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by lynda.com. Today on Variant, I talk to the writer of Action Comics and Batman Superman, Greg Pak. Welcome to Variant. We love comics more than I love the San Diego Comic-Con Batman v Superman trailer. I'm your host, Ares Quinones. So recently, I had the chance to talk to writer Greg Pack at Zeus Comics in Dallas, Texas. If any of you live in the Dallas area, you definitely need to check out their shop. They have a great selection of new comics, back issues, and collectibles. But while there, Greg Pack was awesome enough to take time to talk to us about some comic book goodness. For those of you who don't know, he's written a ton of awesome comics like Planet Hulk, World War Hulk, and he's currently writing action comics and Batman Superman for DC. So of course, I had to talk to him about what's going on in the world of Superman and Batman, especially since both characters have a new status quo post the DC's Convergence event. But we also talk about some other projects he's working on, so let's dive in, shall we? So before we get into it, like I said, you've done a lot of iconic characters over the years, like a lot. But how did you break into the comic book industry and get you to actually start writing comics? Yeah, I did. Um, I went to NYU for film school, so okay. I was a I was a film kid. Um, I mean, I'd grown up reading comics. I'd drawn uh, cartoons and stuff of, of, for years and years and years. Yeah. But I never thought about comics as a profession for whatever reason. I loved movies, and I went to film school, and uh, I made a movie called Robot Stories, um, which, uh, while I was taking that out to uh, the theatrically around the country, mm -hmm. my agent um, found out that Marvel was interested in talking to potential new writers. And she got me a meeting, and it all worked out. And I kind of stepped sideways into comics, and I've been writing comics for the past 11 years. Well, that's amazing. So what was your first big, like, would you consider your first big break in comics? Like, I'm writing this character, I'm doing this for yeah. Marvel or DC. Well, I mean, my first big break was just getting hired at all. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I did a Warlock book um, okay. for Marvel. I mean, I, I came into Marvel, and I, uh, I, did, I had meetings with different editors, and um, I actually started developing a bunch of different things, and I actually wrote full, full scripts for a number of different things that right. didn't go through all the way for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. And they kept saying, we love your stuff, we, you know, we're sorry this one didn't work out, but we love what you're doing. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and uh, we just kept working on it. And then finally, uh, this Warlock book got approved and it went through. And uh, so that was my first uh, first professional work in comics, was a Warlock series drawn by Charlie Adlard. And then I got tapped to, to do the X-Men Phoenix Endsong miniseries that was cool. drawn by Greg Land. And that at that point, I kind of thought, okay, maybe I might actually have a career. <laughs> um, I could probably do this. Well, well, I mean, just because that book, um, I mean, that book did really well. Right. Uh, it was, I think, the first issue was the third highest selling book that month, and wow. and it was, um, you know, because it was Greg Land drawing right. beautiful Greg Land art, mm -hmm. and it was a Phoenix story which hadn't happened in a while, and uh, and I was very lucky, you know. So, uh, <laughs> um, and then I, I did a, a number of different miniseries, um, and then I got tapped to do Planet Hulk, what became Planet yes. Hulk, and then that was probably what really opened things up. More currently, you're doing action comics, yes. which is like action comics is like one of the most you know iconic titles in all comic books, where Superman first appeared and stuff. So. How did that come about, and you know, where's Superman now? Because now we have a new status quo. Well, I'd been writing um, Batman Superman uh, for DC, and at a certain point, they were looking for a new action comics writer, and I was like, <laughs> me. Um, and uh, and well, you know, and so they tapped me for it, and it was amazing. Right. I mean, that's that's again one of those. Uh, you know, every once in a while you get that kind of, you get a call and you kind of dance around because you're so excited. <laughs> you're, on the, you're on the phone like, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> so, um, so that was a thrill. And uh, so, I, yeah, so I'm writing. And, but, but it's worth noting that I'm co-writing action comics with Aaron Cooter. Um, yes. Aaron Cooter is the artist that I started on that book with. And we just loved working together and worked together very collaboratively mm -hmm. from the beginning. And now we're actually co-writing the book. But yeah, so the new storyline that's uh, affecting all of the different books, it's a new status quo for Superman. He, he has lost a lot of his powers, mm -hmm. and his identity has been exposed to the world. So everybody knows that Clark Kent is Superman. So right. you've got Clark Kent uh, dealing with not being able to fly mm -hmm. and having uh, huge uh, problems and huge enemies after him because everybody now knows his secret identity right. and trying to solve the big mysteries of uh, these new new dangerous things that are happening in the world. So um, uh, so that's, that's kind of the new status quo for all of these books. Um, in Action Comics in particular, he, uh, he comes back to Metropolis and um, tons of people sort of fear and, and hate him now, but mm -hmm. there's also a community in Metropolis of the people who live around his neighborhood. Um, right. You know, the place where he actually had his apartment as Clark Kent. It's like a party on the street. People are cele basically celebrating Superman and they're, they're, uh, they've taken over the street. Yeah. Uh, like this is the place where people are like, Superman's a good guy. He, uh, he helped keep us safe. So Clark shows up, but then he shows up at the same time that uh, the, the authorities are trying to shut that all down. Okay. So uh, big, dr big dramatic goings on are happening right now in action comics. So we know like he's depowered now. It's kind of almost reverted to like golden age Superman in a sense. We're still strong. He's just not nearly as strong. Right. 
and currently, you know, it's going on in the Superman books, it's going on in Action Comics, it's bleeding over into, you know, all, basically all the Superman books is bleeding over to. But as what we've seen thus far, we know that like when he does the Super Flare, which is a new power, that he kind of, his power depletes for like 24 hours, but it kind of seems like we're seeing how we got there. Right. Yeah. You, so you, how is that going to... We've got go a on? bit of a Pulp Fiction thing going here yeah. where you've got <laughs> different parts. So each one of the books, so there's... There's Action Comics, right. there's Batman, Superman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. So right. those are four different books. The Superman book, which is written by Gene Yang, the great Gene Yang, right. and drawn by John Romita Jr., that book is telling the story of how Superman lost his powers and how he, his identity got exposed. Right. So that takes place or before the other books. Okay. Um, the yeah. Action Comics book tells, what, tells the story, this kind of first story of him coming back to Metropolis. Mm -hmm. The Batman Superman story shows him dealing with the new Batman. Right. And the Superman Wonder Woman book is showing how he deals with Wonder Woman or how Wonder Woman deals with him under these new circumstances. So, but each one of these books takes place at a slightly different time. You know, right. so you're so, but they're all coming out on a month-to-month -month basis at the same time. It's it's sort of a fun way to get peaks of this mm -hmm. overarching story right. at different moments. But each one of the separate books can maintain its own integrity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Action Forty One doesn't end on a cliffhanger that picks up at the beginning of right. Batman Superman Twenty One. So the stories aren't jumbled up like that. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you read the action books, they're all sequential. You read the Batman Superman, it's all sequential. So people who are just reading one book can read that one book and get that satisfying story. So you don't have to read all the different. Yeah. To understand but what's you happening. want to. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and get them. Get them all. They're all great. So that kind of leads into because you're also doing Batman Superman. Uh -huh. So those are like two of the most iconic characters in comic book history. So what was it like when DC's like, hey, we want you to do Batman, uh, okay. Batman and Superman? It was a trip. It was a trip. I mean, and then they also told me, you know, that Jay Lee is going to draw it, which yes. was mind blowing, you know, because Jay Lee is amazing. Uh, he's one of those artists I've admired for years and has such a beautiful, distinctive style. Right. So, uh, I mean, it was a dream come true. So, well, well like you said, you, you started the arc with uh, Jay Lee because you launched the title with him. Uh, and he's actually getting uh, his own action figure line that's based yeah, off yeah. your guys' first run, which is really cool. But how has the story evolved since your guys' first arc to now we're in this new status quo right. with both Superman? And Batman. Right. Well, the big dramatic thing that has happened uh, in the Batman universe, and I guess I can just say this because it's out there in the world, <laughs> is that uh, Batman is gone. Uh, Bruce Wayne is gone. Yes. And the new Batman is... Uh, can I say that? I can say yeah, this. You can say it. You can say it. They, they all know. It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gordon. You know, like yes. Gordon is new Batman. And uh, so it's a whole new thing. He's wearing this huge Batman armor. It's right. awesome. So we've got this, you know, underpowered identity exposed Superman right. coming up against a new Batman in Batman armor. And these right. two guys have to figure out what, who the heck the other guy is and whether they can trust right. the other guy. So it's an exploration. It's, it's a chance to sort of relook at that relationship and see them figure out if they can trust each other. Well, now, how is their relationship going to be? Because Clark is now depowered, so he's a little different. He's still, you know, still Clark Kent. But now, like you said, this is an all new Batman. So this isn't Bruce anymore. So the relationship and the dynamic is going to be totally different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're so. starting from, they're starting from you know, they're starting from ground zero, and right. so they have a lot to, uh, they've got a lot of work to do. Also, because <laughs> Superman shows up in Gotham and starts punching people out, uh, and, uh, you know, and Batman has no idea who this guy He's is. like, this is my city. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, who's this guy in a Superman shirt? You know what I mean? Right. Superman flies, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> okay, so creatively, because you're also writing Batman in the Batman Superman book, so we know that, you know, all the main Batman stuff is going on with Snyder in the Batman world mm -hmm. and stuff, but how far in advance, or, di or even did you have any input with the... Jim Gordon Batman, or did you guys just have, you know, did he call you up? He's like, I want to do this. I know you're running Batman Superman, so this is how the new Batman's going to be, and he's going to have to be like this in your book, or does, like, DC call you? How does, you well, know Well, Scott and I are buddies, so we, okay. you know, so I, I, I talk to him fairly often, and, okay. and so we, we kind of fill each other in on what we're doing and right. make sure it all jibes up, so. Mm -hmm. No, it's great. I mean, uh, Scott is endlessly creative and taking these huge, you know, he takes these huge leaps and, and, right. and, and it, I love it. I love it. You know what I <laughs> yeah, mean? Yeah. It's like, cause it, that's the only way, you know, you, you gotta move forward. You gotta, you gotta try new things all the time and, and he's fearless and it's just a blast just to see what he's doing. Going out of the comic book world a little bit, you also do kid books. One of the most recent ones is ABC Disgusting. Yes. I, it's a brand new book called ABC Disgusting. Okay. We're doing a Kickstarter for it right now. Um, at abcdisgusting.com, uh, easy to find. Uh, the Kickstarter runs through the end of, of July, July 29, I think is our last day. Okay. And uh, it is a alphabet book about disgusting things. So it's about a kid <laughs> who's trying to gross out his sister right. with a series of disgusting things. And, uh, but then eventually she's gonna turn the tables on him 
with the most disgusting thing of all, <laughs> and I'm not going to say what it is. But uh, no, it's it's a fun book for like for re reluctant readers in particular, right, like ki kids who may not be inclined to pick up a book unless something slightly naughty is going mm -hmm. on. Uh, but it's a ton of fun. It's drawn by the same folks who did The Princess Who Saved Herself, okay. which is the first uh, kids book I did. So it's the same art team, Takeshi Miyazawa cool. and uh, Jessica Colleen and Simon Boland, and they're amazing. So it's it's a it's a lot of fun. Well, what, are you working on anything else besides those two? Yes. That you... And then the, my my last really big thing that's going on right now is um, Kingsway West, okay. which is a new creator-owned book. Right. Um, it's actually my first creator-owned comic book series. Um, it's coming out from Dark Horse okay. in November, and it is uh, the story of a Chinese gunslinger searching for his wife in an Old West overrun with magic. Cool. So it's kind that of uh, cool. it's kind of Sergio Leone meets uh, Miyazaki, you know. So, <laughs> um, but uh, it's a yeah, I mean it's a dream project. It's a thing I've been wanting to do in one form or another for over 20 years. Right. So it's it's finally coming together. Mirko Kolak is drawing. It's gorgeous stuff. And uh, and if you go to KingswayWest.com, mm -hmm. you can actually pre-order it. You can pick your comic shop from a drop-down list and, right. uh, and and place an order. All right, well, thank you, Greg, for talking with us. I appreciate it. It's been it. awesome. There you have it, friends. Amazing content from an amazing writer. I also want to say thank you to Greg for taking time to talk to us. He's a fantastic writer and a super nice guy. Be sure to pick up both DC titles he's currently working on, Action Comics and Batman Superman. But also check out his Kickstarter for his kids' book, ABC Disgusting, which is a children's book about disgusting things. You have a few more days to help back it on Kickstarter, and I'm sure Greg would appreciate it if you did. And check out King's Way West, which hits comic shops in November. It sounds like a really awesome idea, and I know I'll be picking it up. And lastly, go to his website to keep up to date with everything that Greg is working on. I put the links of everything I just mentioned in the description. Lynda.com is an online learning company with more than 77,000 video tutorials that teach software, creative, and business skills. Memberships start at $25 per month and provides an unlimited 24-7 access to top quality video courses taught by expert instructors with real-world experience. Learn anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace from bite-sized tutorials to comprehensive courses in web design, programming design, photography, business, audio and video, 3D and animation. And you can learn on the go with their optimized mobile site or free iPhone and iPad app for members. Try Lynda.com for free for seven days by visiting lynda.com forward slash variants and get some knowledge into your brain. First up for Wednesday, July 22nd, we have Star-Lord and Kitty Pride issue 1. Star-Lord and Kitty Pride are finally in a title together. Now we have Wonder Woman 42. To replace Ares as the God of War, Wonder Woman must better understand him, and that means a journey to Ares' home. And finally, we have We Are Robin issue 2. In Gotham City, hundreds of Robins have taken the streets, but who will be their leader? And that brings another episode of Variant to a close. But again, thank you to Greg Pack for chatting with us. And as always, be sure to like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Ares underscore but I will see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics. 2099 Spider-Man. I would love to see the movie about the question. Victor Sage, he was really good in the Justice League Unlimited cartoon.